Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. Well, today I wanted to dive into something that I thought would be a lot of fun and kind of interesting. About a week or two ago, I did a video where we watched some videos of some of the most uh, well-known German military leaders from World War II and we uh, watched them speaking and kind of reacted to what their voices were like. And I've mentioned in the past uh, wanting to take a look at some of the historic figures of the past and what they would look like today or what they would look like you know in real life in real color in real 3d rather than in the images and paintings and drawings and sculptures and things like that that we actually have of them so there's this video on a channel called mystery scoop and i'll link in the description if you want to check out the original content without my commentary uh, and it's called what historical figures might look like if they lived today volume one and there's a whole bunch of them i thought it might be fun because they do a really great job of showing them just like you're looking at me like in, in full color moving around uh, and then I'm going to show you a resource where you can actually play with this a little bit for yourself. Maybe not to the level of detail and to the level of quality of this, but there's a website called My Heritage that has some really cool things you can do with historic pictures. So let's go ahead and dive into this. As always, I want to give a big shout out and a thank you to our patrons uh, who support this channel uh, and make it possible for me to make trips to places like my upcoming trip to the Netherlands. Uh, really excited about that one. I can't wait to bring you content. More content coming from my trip to France this week. Uh, and I just want to... Uh, let you know that there is a new poll that has gone up over on Patreon uh, for all of our patrons at all levels to vote on what you want to see next uh, as far as reaction series from this channel. So go ahead and check that out and vote right now. Here we go. Three scoop. An artist uses AI tools to create a modern version of historical figures. Have you ever wondered Caesar. what historical figures might look like? Da Vinci. If they live today. Uh, Queen Mary? Well, a digital artist named Hidrelli from Brazil had a similar question, and he used modern AI tools to figure it out. Interesting. He created a realistic depiction of some of history's most iconic figures. Yeah, hatch up soot. Capturing their main facial characteristics. That's really cool. Keeping in mind that if they lived in this day and age, modern lifestyle would have created a slightly twisted version of them. Yeah, because you figure they're going to dress different, they're going to do their hair differently, the, the styles were different from one generation to the next. Let's have a look at a few amazing examples of his work, with a little AI animation thrown in the mix. Caesar, very cool. I like this one a lot. Here's what I like about this one. I, first of all, I always thought Caesar was a really interesting guy to look at, and, and I love uh, the level of detail that these Roman sculptors had. I mean, just look at that. He really, like, it looks like life. They do a fantastic job. And there's some, so there's detail there you don't get in a painting because it's 3D. And it's, oh, it's just incredible. And I love this because he looks like what you might expect him to look. Now, Caesar was a little older by the time he died. And I think this one probably is him at a younger age, um, maybe like in his 40s or something. Uh, but very cool and in the suit and everything. I like this one a lot. That's very cool And it, he's even blinking and coming to life and smiling a little bit Nice All right, we're on to our next one now. Oh Henry the eighth nice now, you have to keep in mind, Henry VIII did not always look like that. For most of his life, he was actually pretty fit. He was very into jousting. He was considered by most people to be a handsome guy. People talked a lot about what great legs he had, his calves and things like that. He had a jousting injury. He got an injury to his leg. It was like an ulcer that developed after that injury, and it never healed. And people talked about how awful it smelled and how it debilitated him from physical activity. And so it was only in that last part of his life, that last... 10, 12 years or so of his life that he became the Henry VIII that we all know. And it may have contributed, that infection may have contributed to uh, the increasing bouts of what we could probably label as insanity in his later life. But uh, very cool. I mean, it definitely looks like him. The same nose and everything. Like, these almost look like they're real people that they found that look like him. I don't know if this is computer generated or what, but if it is, it's fantastic. It really does look like him a lot. 
That's really cool. All right, so who's next? We got Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Da Vinci's a little trickier because we don't have the level of detail. I think this is actually a self-portrait by da Vinci. Um, but really still very interesting and, and cool. Uh, da Vinci was an interesting guy, like a kind of a... He was a little off, you know, but I think most brilliant artists are a little off. Joan of Arc. That's awesome. Joan of Arc's another one we don't have a lot of great images of. We don't have like the stuff like we do of Caesar or Henry VIII. Uh, and of course, Henry VIII stuff was all very like controlled by what Henry wanted people to see. So it was not going to be unflattering. And Joan of Arc was very young. She was only a teenager when she died. Uh, but that's really cool. I like that. Livia Drusilla. Okay, that's cool. I don't see this one quite as much. I don't know. I mean, maybe. But it doesn't look quite like I was expecting. Like, I look at that image. And it's not like the one with Caesar where it's like, yeah, that looks just like I mean, it's perfect. This one I'm not sure about. Oh, Hadrian. Here we go. So later Roman emperor. And you, you love the hair that they had later on. Like, it's so different than like what you see from Julius Caesar. But again, very cool, very well done. Um, nose is a little different, I think, on this one too. But otherwise, pretty good. It's interesting some of the people he chose. Going with a lot of Roman uh, citizens. And it makes sense because the Romans, we have these great sculptures. The hair looks good on that one. But um, let's see who else we've got here. Mary Queen of Scots, okay. So Mary Queen of Scots is interesting. She was a, uh, a cousin to uh, Queen Elizabeth of England. Uh, Mary Queen of Scots' grandmother and Queen Elizabeth's father were brother and sister. Uh, and so then Mary Queen of Scots' son becomes King James I of England. He was James VI of Scotland. Mary was, of course, beheaded on orders of Queen Elizabeth because she was a threat. That one's pretty cool. I like that. She was briefly Queen of France before she went back to Scotland. Let's see who's next. Mary Tudor. Okay, so this is uh, Henry VIII's daughter. Bloody Mary, we call her. Uh, she, she inherited the throne after... So Henry VIII dies, and the throne passes to his son, Edward VI. Um, who dies as a teenager, and then it goes to Mary as the oldest sister. Uh, and she, Bloody Mary, as they called her, because she cracked down on Protestants and had a lot of them killed. But this is really, really well done. Even the eye color is perfect. That's a good one. I like that a lot. George Washington. Nice. He's holding his drink. I love that. George Washington, very prominent facial features. Very, um, you know, we have a lot, again, a lot of paintings of him. Uh, and you notice he always has his mouth closed because he had really bad teeth. And they were really, un even his false teeth that he wore were really uncomfortable for him. If you want to see a great uh, example of uh, a portrayal of Washington in film that looks just like him, David Morse as George Washington in HBO's John Adams series looks the part big time. And I think he has his mannerisms and his kind of quiet, soft spoken nature down pretty good. Isaac Newton. That one's cool. He's a he's a good looking dude. It's kind of cool. I like that. But the mouth, you know, they've got the mouth and the nose down. Like it really does. The face looks like Isaac Newton there. I like that. Famous scientist. Known for his theories on gravity. Johann Sebastian Bach. Interesting. This one's really cool, too. Because Bach's a guy, you look at his uh, the images of him, and then you look at this, and he really does come to life. And not what I was expecting, but it matches. I mean, it works. But that's not what I would expect to see Bach look like in real life, but I can't argue with it. Beethoven. Yeah. So that's cool. So Beethoven, you know, in this painting, he looks like the mad scientist a little bit, right? He's got the disheveled hair. He's got the pencil. 
just, I don't know, he just looks like the guy who who's brilliant but disturbed at the same time. Of course, we know Be- later in life, Beethoven was mostly deaf, uh, and he would actually, like, feel the vibrations as he was, he continued to write even after he was deaf, which is amazing to me. Uh, some of the best stuff he wrote was after he had lost his ability to hear. That one's cool. Like, it's a young version of Beethoven, but I like it. I like seeing that version of him, the cool artist look. Michelangelo. Again, you know, not quite what I was expecting, but I can't argue with the results. Like, it definitely looks like him. He's got that smile going a little bit there. Again, kind of the disheveled, brilliant artist type. Pretty neat. A young Hercules. Of course, I don't know that this is made from, you know, a historic person. It may have been modeled on someone when they made it, but obviously they're they're you know not necessarily making this about a real life person uh, at the time. Marcus Aurelius, uh, you know, kind of a fictionalized version of him uh, from the movie Gladiator. Uh, but that's really well done. I like that one a lot. Definitely looks like him. The beard, the hair, the whole bit. That works. I like it. Who's our last one? Bull Bear. I'm not familiar with Bull Bear. But I like it. It definitely looks like a modern version of a Native American. Um, but boy, there's a lot of, I think, more prominent Native Americans they probably could have chosen, even ones that we have actual photos of. Uh, but that's pretty cool. Uh, that's just part one of this, and there's actually a part two, so let's check that out while we're at it. So apparently they have like nine volumes of this, so we're not going to watch all of them, but we'll go ahead and watch some of the highlights uh, of part two here. So here's Alexander the Great. Interesting. Now, Alexander's a young guy when he dies. You know, he's only, what, like in his early 30s when he dies and was known to have kind of blonde hair. Um, it works. I, I think maybe the face is a little too thin for me. Um, but otherwise, I mean, you, you can tell. Look, I mean, this had to have been made when he was younger because he kind of looks like a baby face in that picture. But it works. Mona Lisa. Um, we think probably based on a real person, but we just don't know for sure who. But yeah, I can see it. I can see that a lot. The nose is, is pretty well done. Maybe the lady's mouth is a little too wide compared to the picture, but that's pretty cool. Um, I hear that visiting the Mona Lisa is quite a thing because like there's a ton of people that all surround and it's not a very big painting. Ah, Nefertiti, very cool. I like it. The facial structure is pretty good. Akhenaten, who uh, I believe this is the the father of King Tut, King Tutankhamun. Uh, and, yeah, again, you can't tell a lot from that particular statue. And a lot of the stuff for Akhenaten was destroyed because he was a... Um, he kind of pushed worshipping of one god um, rather than the pantheon of gods that the Egyptians had. And a lot of people tried to wipe out his memory afterwards. William Shakespeare. Okay, very cool. I like it. He's even got the earring going on there. The big forehead. Maybe a little too bald on top, but it works. I see it. That's pretty cool. The nose is definitely spot on. Caesar Augustus. Oh man, he's a handsome looking dude, isn't he? But Caesar was, I think, probably a, a handsome guy. Uh, interesting. Very cool. The very chiseled look on his cheeks. Looks like a model a little bit. Uh, Caesar Augustus was known to be not a particularly like big, tough guy. A little more on the frail side, but uh, certainly used his mind to get where he did. Saladin. Saladin, the, uh, the great uh, Syrian. Well, he's from the, that part of you know area we know today as Syria. But the great Muslim warrior who went toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Christians in the Holy Land. Very cool. I like it. Good looking guy again. I like the beard. Good look. Same eye color and everything. Napoleon. <laughs> That's interesting. He actually looks a lot like him. I don't know if you know this, but there's a Napoleon movie coming out on, I think it's a movie, uh, on Apple TV starring, uh, what's his name? The guy from Gladiator. Um, Joaquin Phoenix is playing Napoleon. There's some photos of it that are out there. It actually looks pretty good from what I could see. Um, cool. 
Salvador Mundi. I'm not familiar with him. He's looking kind of like Jesus with the whole peace, you know, blessing thing going on there. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Vincent van Gogh. Interesting. Since I'm going to be in the Netherlands, um, and he was born in Neunen, which is one of the towns I think that we'll be in. Uh, really cool uh, portrayal of van Gogh in Doctor Who. And a guy looks a lot like him, actually, in that one. Rembrandt, one of my favorite artists of all time. I love the way, like his colors and just Dutch paintings in general are fantastic. That's cool, I like him. Vivaldi is a composer. Oh, interesting looking, very different than I would expect. Frederick Chopin. Yeah, I see that, I see it, okay. A little streak of gray going on there in the hair, pretty cool. Ah, uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Definitely looks like him. I like that one a lot. Uh, brilliant prodigy, even as a child, was writing music. Died fairly young, if I remember right. Anne of Cleves, the uh, fifth wife of Henry VIII. The one who managed to get out, not only without dying, but also without being beheaded and without getting in trouble. Became a good friend of the king afterwards. Uh, he thought she was ugly when he met her in person. Said she looked like a horse, but uh, lived out her days in England, considered a sister to the king. And Cleopatra. Cleopatra, man, from, from the sculptures of her and stuff, not particularly attractive. More attractive in this, this modern image than in the ones you see there. But uh, Okay, pretty cool. So let me show you um, how you can do this with your own photos. It's pretty cool. So over on myheritage.com, uh, they have these really cool tools, and so you know I have a membership, so I can do these for an unlimited number of photos. But uh, I believe you get so many for free that you can do, uh, and they have a bunch of different tools. So right here, I've got a picture of George S. Patton, uh, the general from World War II. Now uh, you can do something called enhancing, which will take and repair damage to photos, things like that. And it works better on some than others, depends on the quality of the photo, but this is what the enhancement looks like. It'll smooth it out a little bit, give you a little more fine detail uh, in some of those photos. Then there's the ability to colorize. And again, works better on some photos than on others, but let's go ahead and try it on this particular photo. And it does a pretty good job. It's not gonna make it look like it was taken yesterday on your iPhone but it's gonna bring out some details and give life to a photo that maybe you never saw before. So see, you know, not perfect in the way details work out sometimes, it's kind of like that. Here's another one. Uh, this is my wife's grandfather uh, when he was in World War II. You've heard me talk about him. He's in the 379th Bomb Group. They flew B-17s, he was a ball turret gunner. Uh, so this is him, colorized, enhanced, and repaired. And so again, you can just see details you couldn't otherwise see. But then here's where it gets really crazy. Now, this isn't probably the best photo to do this with. Um, let's pick this picture of Abraham Lincoln that has been colorized. Uh, now, check this out. We're going to animate it. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do the animation, but here you go. It's animated, just like that. Now, you can choose different animations because some are going to work better than others. Like, uh, you know what? Uh, do I want to give him something crazy with his eyebrows? I can do that if I want. Um, yeah, some of the stuff, it just brings to life a little bit, these people that you didn't see before. And you see how he's smiling and moving his eyebrows. Some of it looks weird and doesn't really work. So you have to play with these a little bit to find what animation looks natural. Um, and you can do the same thing with the, the repairs and the colorization too. You can play around with all kinds of features until you find something that works. Because some animations aren't going to work for every picture. Uh, let me find an example of one that I did with one of my historic photos uh, of my own family. So this is a photo of three of my great-grandfather's brothers who owned a barber shop in Portsmouth, Ohio. Uh, and so this is uh, Arthur. We called him Shorty. Uh, this is his brother Richard in the center, and then their brother Walter on the right. And they own this barbershop. It's called Mowry's Barbershop. And it's funny because it's spelled differently than the way I spell my last name, but that's how it went at the time. Um, and then colorized and enhanced, it just really just, there's things you notice in the photos when you see it that way that you wouldn't have otherwise noticed. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little better. Um, and actually, we're going to blow it up here too so we can see it even better here. Um, well, I guess it, 
doesn't want to go any bigger than that. So let's try saving it and do it that way. And then I, that way I can zoom in. So it wasn't a good quality picture to begin with. So that's why the details are kind of fuzzy and it's a little rough. But that's how the original photo was. But you can still see the sign that says haircut uh, and the price. And you can see that there's something going on over here. And you can see the sign that says shoe shine. And, you know, when it was black and white, a lot of those details get lost uh, in the photo. And you don't notice them quite as much as you otherwise might have. So uh, let's do one more. So here's a photo of the Red Baron with his uh, bandage on his head sit, sitting with his flying circus in the summer of 1917. And there's just a little bit of color brought to it. And isn't that just amazing? I, I just, there's something, and I, listen, I, I know there's a lot of purists that love the black and white photos and don't want to mess with them. But I think sometimes it just gives you a different perspective when you see them in color like that. Uh, just kind of a neat thing. Uh, there's something else that they have now that I'm going to do an entire dedicated video on, and that's the live story, which some people find a little creepy, but I find pretty amazing. But we'll talk about that down the road. It actually brings people to life and has them speaking, and you can give them different voices, and they tell their own history. It's pretty cool stuff, but that'll be for another day. What's this video here? Oh, this was a video, or this was a picture um, that I did. Um, this, uh, I believe these are the Accrington Pals or one of the East Lancashire uh, units uh, from World War II. And there's the original photo, and there's what it looks like colorized. And just, again, really cool. And you can get some detail you might not otherwise have. So just something to play with. Check it out. It's myheritage.com. Uh, I thought you might find that to be interesting. But if you're a patron or if you consider being a patron, all the money raised on Patreon goes directly to fund me making trips to historic sites to bring you guys content for the channel. Uh, so uh, there's a new uh, vote going on right now, and I will be bound by that vote. Whatever you guys vote on in the next couple of days, that's what will be the next reaction series. Check it out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.